Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here. Hope you've all been doing well. In this video, I wanted to share the experience I recently had dealing with EVGA's RMA service. On YouTube, you'll often find that people are often doing reviews and giving their thoughts on products. However, the way a company that's behind the product acts or behaves can also be an important factor to consider when making your purchasing decision. I rarely ever see people talk about things like this, and it's good to let you guys have some insight on it. You can have an amazing product, but if your after purchase customer service is horrible, then that can be a valid reason for being a deal breaker. On the other hand, having great customer service is such an effective way of building a long lasting relationship with the customer and ensuring they'll continue to buy your products and keep doing business with you. That's one of the main reasons why I like making videos like this, sharing how the experience was dealing with the company's customer service and if I can recommend them. Now before we get into the details, just to give you guys a bit of background info in case you're a recent follower of the channel. Back in 2017, a little before I had upgraded to the Ryzen 7 1800X, I was using a refurbished MSI GTX 1070 Armor OC Edition graphics card which I had got from an army that I went through with uh, MSI. While the card was great and offered good performance, I wanted something with more power to, that could drive my 1440p 144Hz monitor so I could get the most out of it. After witnessing the Vega derailment train, I ended up setting my sights on a 1080 Ti. There were a lot of models to choose from and I was originally leaning towards getting an MSI model since I had a positive experience with them prior. However, I saw EVGA's 1080 Ti SC Black Edition on sale over at Amazon and it seemed pretty reasonably priced considering most of the AIB cards here in Canada had a $100 to $200 markup attached to them. I had used a couple of EVGA's cards in the past when doing builds for others, I've used quite a lot of their power supplies which have all been pretty solid, and haven't really had any negative feedback. Plus, with all the praise you hear about them all over various tech forums for having great customer service, I was feeling confident with my purchase. Now, I had gotten the EVGA 1080 Ti SC Black Edition in the middle of 2017 and had even done a review on it when I gave the card a glowing review. It offered impeccable performance, but not only that, it was fairly quiet under load and thermals weren't too bad either. Even still, to this day, I've looked at the 1080 Ti as one of the best purchasing decisions I've made on a PC component. Because even though it was quite a lot of money back then, it is still offering performance comparable to Nvidia's flagship cards from the current generation over two years later. So for the most part, since I bought the card in July of 2017, I was content with my purchase of EVGA's 1080 Ti SE Black and didn't have any issues with it. Until recently that is. So back in September and a little bit before that I had noticed that my card started to emit a lot of coil wine noise at times randomly. Now a graphics card of this caliber will probably have a little bit of coil wine to begin with due to having so many components for power delivery with many inductors and coils. Like this card has had a little bit of coil wine since I bought it. And a few other cards I've owned in the past have also had it as well, such as my MSI R9 390 and GTX 1070. But this past September it got pretty bad and normally I would ignore things like this as I'm someone who uses headphones to consume content, whether it's watching videos, listening to music, or playing a game. So noise hasn't ever been a big concern for me and as someone who has a Corsair Air 740 with like 8 fans installed, I'm pretty tolerant when it comes to acoustics. However, what ended up really irritating me was the fact that the card was actually emitting the noise through my headphones too. I'm not just talking about external noise leaking, but that noise was resonating within through my headphones drivers, to the point where it became annoying to even use headphones. Along with that, while I was playing a match of Rocket League, the card started to artifact the entire screen. There was a green and purple checkered pattern over the screen, which in that moment made me think the card was on its way out. Although shortly after the game crashed, I got a message saying the drivers had been recovered and after that it looked like everything went back to normal. But it was mostly after this period that I started to experience noises from the card and while the games appeared to be back to normal, I would experience random crashes from time to time. And this is stock by the way, nothing was overclocked. Anyways, I decided it would be best to RMA the card as after all the troubleshooting I had done, the card was still experiencing the same issues. I got in touch with EVGA's RMA service over the phone and they were quick to approve of it the day after. So I went to my local UPS store and do dropped it off on the 6th of November. What sucks is that unlike ASUS, MSI or Sapphire, EVGA doesn't have an RMA facility here in the greater Toronto area. Their facility is down in California and the cheapest option 
with tracking that UPS gave me ended up costing me $90. Whereas with MSI, I just had to drive about 30 minutes and I was able to drop my card off there. Obviously, I'm not saying this is on EVGA. It's just that in the future when purchasing components, I guess it's a good good thing to keep in mind that there are there are AIBs with service centers close to me where I don't have to spend extra money on shipping stuff. Now, UPS had originally told me that they'd get the card delivered to their RMA center by the 13th of November, but they ended up delaying it by a day because of some clearance issues at customs. Not a huge deal, I understand things happen, and a delay by a single day isn't really much. Now, some time went by, and I had gotten a notification on the 18th of November telling me that my replacement card is getting shipped out to me. I was happy to see that, but at the same time, I was a little bit confused that nobody had reached out to me from their RMA team as to what was going on with the replacement exactly. Now, while I was at work, I decided to contact them through their chat method to get some details about the RMA. The rep who I got in touch with told me that the card I had sent in passed all their tests, meaning they never found anything wrong with it. Which I thought was strange and when I asked him to elaborate with further details, he said they weren't allowed to share any details of their testing, just that they found nothing wrong with it. I asked him, hey, did you guys at least find the issue with the headphones? And he proceeds to tell me that they never checked that. Which was weird, but okay. However, he did mention that though, just in case, they will be sending out another card of the same model, just like a different card with a different serial number. And they are uh, refurbished cards too. Now, I was initially fine with this, as long as the card works and is in good condition, I'm fine with it. And their rep had mentioned that he was giving me the assurance that they inspect everything before sending it out. So, alright, that sounds awesome. So a couple days pass by, and on the 20th of November, I get the delivery of the replacement card. When I unboxed the card, it didn't come in a retail-styled box, but a plain brown box with EVGA's logo in the middle. I take out the card from the ESD bag and notice that the card had a bit of dust on the fans and a bit of debris on the backplate. It was a small amount, nothing big, but what struck out to me as really weird was that I could see the thermal pads from the VR VRAM sticking out quite awkwardly, like they weren't uniformly placed. I didn't think too much of it at the time and went ahead and installed the card into my PC. Now, while playing some Modern Warfare, I noticed that the card was running pretty loud, even with the normal fan curve I usually use. I checked the temps and saw this card was running at around 80 to 82 degrees with some peaks at 84 degrees Celsius. Something was definitely wrong with this card, because my old one, despite having those issues, would run much cooler under the same load. If you guys have seen some of my performance test videos in the past, you can take a look at the RTS monitoring overlay and you'll see the card would be hovering around 60 to 65 degrees under load with an overclock. I pulled out the card from my system and decided to do a teardown of it. And what I saw before me was just appalling. The thermal paste was all crusty and dry, it was clearly worn out. Along with that, the thermal pads were also worn down, covered in dust, and some were even torn. So, clearly this card wasn't thoroughly inspected, and it shouldn't have passed their quality control, let alone be deemed acceptable to send out to someone as a replacement. Following that, I got on the phone with EVGA and told them what I had discovered. I had also asked him about the card I had sent in originally and asked for more details because I couldn't get, get it through their chat, and again, he said they found nothing wrong with it during their testing. I had also asked about the noise with the headphones and asked if you guys had experienced the same stuff on your end, and he proceeds to tell me that they didn't even bother testing that stuff, and it only happens at a special request. That made no sense to me at all. Why does the customer have to inform you to do these special observations if someone is bringing you a product with a specific problem? You as a service department should try to replicate the scenario to see if you can also experience the same issues that the customer is talking about. It's like taking your car to a mechanic for an AC problem and then the mechanic coming back and saying, oh no, the car works just fine because the brakes are good. You never validated my claim, so don't tell me everything was all fine and good. Now the service rep who I got on the phone with that also irritated me a bit because he was pretty dismissive and had a very arrogant tone about him. As if I was making a big deal out of nothing, because he would also mention stuff like how it's normal for cards to run at those temps. Which I get, it is totally safe to run a card at those temps, but should you run it in those conditions? No, probably not. Along with that, he thought it would be better to just send some thermal pads and paste. And I told him, look, I'm going to send you guys some pictures so you can take a look at it for yourself, which he was fine with. I can replace the pads myself and repaste the card. That's not an issue, but it's like, why should I have to take responsibility for someone else's mess up? Basically admitting, yeah, we messed up, but here are some bandages for you, to, for you to just patch yourself up and be on your way. I sent the service rep the pictures, and he got back to me shortly after expressing his apologies and realized why I was upset in the first place, and agreed that it should not have been sent to me. 
He even mentioned that his supervisor was also informed and wasn't really happy with the result either. He informed me that they would be sending out an advanced RMA where they will ship out another replacement card that is the same refurbished model out to me first, and that would be coming with a prepaid shipping label so I can ship them the card back that I had received uh, without any extra cost in the same original box. I was pretty happy that they were able to do this for me and and that I also wouldn't have to go through the whole hassle of shipping out the card on my own expense again. It was unfor unfortunate that, you know, time got wasted because someone had overlooked something, but, you know, I guess mistakes happen, right? On November 22nd, I get a notification that they had shipped out the second replacement card, and on the 25th, I had received it. EVJ seemed to do a pretty good job at shipping out the replacement cards in a speedy manner. This card that I had received appeared to be in much better shape than the first replacement card I had received. The thermal pads had appeared to be placed properly and were in good condition. There wasn't even a speck of dust anywhere on the card. After installing the card and playing around with it, I monitored the temps and saw it, it was running the same way as my first 1080 TISC black card, where the GPU would be hovering around 65 degrees Celsius under load. However, while temps weren't an issue, this card had issues of its own. One of the fans sounded like it was running against something. I double checked my case and the car to see if there was anything hitting it, maybe like a wire got in a way, but I couldn't find anything. I'll play a little audio recording for you guys so you guys can hear it for yourselves. As you guys just heard for yourselves, the fan was making a loud whistling and clicking noise, and this is probably because the bearings must have been worn out. At this point, I'm pretty disappointed with how EVGA is dealing with these replacements. Not sure how the service department is testing the cards and deeming them acceptable for replacement. It's just that I've wasted a lot more time dealing with this than what should have been necessary for an easy solution. As someone who needs to use their machine on a daily basis, this was pretty unacceptable. The first card I received as a replacement was in horrible shape, and although the second one was in better shape, it was barely meeting satisfactory level due to the fans. On the 26th, I put in another ticket with EVJ and got a reply back that someone would be looking into the matter for me. I had also expressed my concern with getting back another refurbished model of the same card. While I understand it's part of their policy, they need to realize that I've had the same three cards in my possession, and they've all had issues on their own. Not sure if it's an issue with their quality control or that the card isn't built with the best materials, but we're talking about a, car, a card which I paid $1,000 Canadian for. I know I feel like I'm nitpicking, but I've owned cards that were a fraction of the cost and did not have these problems. Now, due to Thanksgiving weekend in the US, their department would be closed from the 27th to the 1st of December, so nothing will happen until after that. On the, on the second, I got a reply back from one of the reps saying they can go ahead with another RMA, but they would be sending back the same card. Once again, I told them I didn't feel comfortable receiving the same card, and there was an easy solution to the problem, which was to just send a different model entirely, instead of us having to go through the same song and dance because they insisted on sending the same card back, and I really didn't have faith in their process for that anymore at this point. I got in touch with their service manager, and he was very helpful. After I told him what had transpired with the replacement cards, the hassle I had to go through prior to the second replacement, and the fact that we're now nearing a month since the initial RMA, he had expressed his apologies and told me he had authorized a different replacement card finally, which was the RTX 2080 XE Gaming. Again, this was sent through via an advanced RMA, which was delivered to me on the 12th of December. It took a little longer than usual since they were still waiting on the first uh, return of the first replacement card before they could send out another. The RTX 2080 XE Gaming has much better build quality than the 1080 Ti SC Black, and even though it was a refurbished card as well, it was basically in almost brand new condition from what I could tell. The card also ran pretty quiet, there was hardly any noise over my case vents and offered the same if not better performance as opposed to the 1080 Ti I had. Now, having been just dealing with this long RMA process for a month now, I decided I would take things another step further just in case and water cool the card. 
I ended up ordering a Kraken G12 bracket from NZXT, got the Thermaltake Water 3.0 120mm AIO from a pretty good deal from my local hardware store, and installed it on the GPU. After doing that, I must say I wish I had done it a long time ago. The GPU now runs so quiet, it idles at around 20 degrees Celsius, and under load stays around 45 to 50 degrees Celsius. Plus, due to the greater thermal headroom, this card comfortably boosts itself to 2 GHz and beyond. So in the end, I guess things turned out to be okay, but not after going through what was a roller coaster of an RMA experience with EVGA's RMA service. This whole process could have ended a lot sooner if they had just thoroughly tested the cards they were sending out, or just sent a different model out altogether. I wasn't really expecting the whole RMA process to take this long, especially after knowing the reputation as having one of the best customer service experiences from all the AIBs out there. As much as I like EVGA's products from their power supplies, AIOs, GPUs, motherboards, I'm now going to be more hesitant towards them when taking their parts into consideration for a purchase. Don't get me wrong, I'm not completely knocking on them for having horrible service, because they were helpful, they got back to my emails in a timely manner, sent out replacements pretty quick, and their service manager was really really helpful in the end, but there is a lot of room for improvement is all I'm saying. With that said, I wasn't expecting to make a video this long to share my experience with how an RMA process went, with a reputable component manufacturer that is, though I do think sharing these experiences apart from your regular reviews, unboxings, benchmarks, etc. is very important because it gives you guys an insight on how a company operates with their after purchase customer service, how their warranty is like, what they can do to make things right and compensate the customer. These are things which I find unfortunately are never talked about in the tech press and it's one of the reasons why I decided to make this video. I hope you guys found this video to be informative. Leave your thoughts down below, check out the video description for my other videos and ways to support the channel. If you're interested in more content like this, then make sure you're subscribed. Thanks for watching, take care, and I'll see you in the next one.